which makes m my name look really, you know, simple. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thomas and uh, Matti. <coughs> and uh, it's a part of a larger project that I've uh, started together with uh, different people. So this is one of the first papers in that. Uh, so what we are going to look at is um, uh, the patterns of uh, intergenerational mobility in uh, Norway from the 1930s onwards. Uh, so we know that uh, <coughs> uh, the Nordic countries has uh, higher, from previous work also presented here, that uh, the Nordic countries has higher, uh, inter uh, higher mobility, intergenerational mobility than uh, most other rich countries. Uh, but we do not know so much about uh, the changes of mobility over time. So that is what we are going to um, look at in this uh, paper. So, uh, yeah, you know, I don't have to show, show you the uh, literature that has already been uh, reported earlier in the, at the conference. Um, uh, so the questions we have is that uh, we know that the intergenerational mobility is high in uh, Norway today. But we don't really know uh, the process leading up to this, you know, what happened. Uh, and of course, <coughs> um, so what we are going to look at is the uh, changes for children born uh, around 1930, where their fathers born uh, 30 years earlier, um, and up to the 70s and, uh, and 80s. And we will also look at uh, some of the, you know, this is in income then. We will also look at the transition channel, especially education. Uh, and we are using a skill measure, which, which is the, you know, military IQ uh, tests, which we have for the cohort born in 1930 onwards. Uh, as I said, <coughs> this is a part of a broader project uh, that I have. Uh, we were trying to look at different things, but you know, basically the, uh, the development and early investments and reforms affecting social mobility <coughs> um, from the 20s and 30s onwards. But of course, there was a lot of structural change in this period. I mean, you know, uh, a lot of new industries uh, was established in Norway, um, and it's also the period where the welfare state was established basically, or started to be established. Uh, important education reforms, uh, an important reform that uh, uh, we are going to look at, which we know have uh, digitalized as a reform in the mid-1930s, uh, <coughs> where they extended the number of weeks uh, taught in school, in primary school, uh, from, you know, it could be as low as 15, 12, 15 weeks until 42, like a standard year today. So there were huge differences uh, across uh, regions or municipalities. So that was a law uh, enacted in 35, and which we have coded up. <coughs> there were, you know, poverty relief programs, redistribution, and there were also uh, a lot of uh, large health investment programs. For instance, uh, uh, one thing that we have looked at is the mother-child centers that was established from the mid-1930s onwards. And it was sort of rolled out, the same as, you know, a lot of uh, the education reform, etc. I'm not going to look at these reforms today. <laughs> so this is a part of a project. So what we have been uh, doing a lot for this project is to collect information about um, uh, earnings and connecting uh, fathers and uh, sons and also brothers. Uh, so what we will be doing uh, is to analyze the pattern of intergenerational mobility in this period where the welfare state was developed. Uh, this is a very descriptive study, but we will also look at, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the education channel. You know, was there a change in the? Uh, uh, <coughs> okay, so so we see the development of intergenerational mobility and earnings. Uh, do we see something similar for education, and also whether the uh, returns to skills and uh, education changed in this time period. <coughs> so uh, what we will do is that we will use different measures. As you will uh, realize uh, soon that, you know, the data is not as good uh, for all parts uh, of the period we have. But when we are using different measures, uh, we, we will use uh, following uh, Anders' work, 
the, uh, when we do brothers' correlation, for instance, born in 1930 onwards, they will all have good earnings data from 67 onward when they are in, in the mid 30s. Um, and we are comparing those to the, you know, the standard measure and now um, the, the standard rank <coughs> correlation measure. And, and we can see that we get uh, uh, similar patterns using uh, these me uh, measures. And we will look at uh, uh, non-linearities and also transition matrices, you know, going from below to the highest, etc. Um, there has been a big, you know, big data job. I mean, you have the registry data, as um, others have been talking about, and that me and Magna and others have been using a lot. Uh, when you go back, you need to add in. So we have um, uh, done quite a bit on a uh, job on that. I will show you a li little later. Uh, so, you know, this is what I'm going to talk about. Data. Uh, okay. So we have the full population, uh, as Jürgen was talking about, from 1960 onwards. So the Norwegian registry was based on this on the 1960 uh, census, but not only that. It was also made, uh, you know, based on uh, local censuses by municipality. Uh, and people in statistics Norway had done a job uh, in a project they had some years ago, actually a couple, uh, two, three dec decades ago, uh, where they extended this data back so that you also can match <coughs> uh, fathers and sons and brothers, etc and also, you know, where and when people were born, back to the 1920s. Uh, and also we're using another source, which I have been using a lot, and others as well, and that is military records. And, be, you know, it used to be the case that, you know, we had data from uh, people born in 1950, tested 20 years later or 19 years later. But uh, <coughs> um, I found out that uh, two uh, uh, cohorts existed from uh, the early 30s, which can be ma matched to the standard uh, registry in Norway, and that would be uh, useful for us. Yeah, you know, this is more the standard, standard things. Uh, and uh, on top of this, of course, we have digitalized, as I said, a lot of these reforms and things uh, that happen. Uh, father's income will be a challenge. It turns out that for these two cohorts, uh, you have a lot of background information. So these guys were tested in the early 50s. So, so they were born in the early 30s, but their fathers born 30 years about, on average, earlier. Uh, so there's a lot of information about the father's occupation, father's education, where they were born. You know, there's a lot of information. Even, you know, how many weeks they had on, uh, in school in that area when they grew up. So there's a lot of information here. Um, so we are exploiting that <coughs> when we are imputing uh, earnings. So um, so what, what you're doing is that we are using the 1948 tax statistics uh, and we are using a standard way of grouping occupations into uh, 20 occupation groups. Uh, but, you know, for uh, 735 municipalities. So there's a lot of, uh, of uh, variation here. And we have also made this occupation structure, which actually comes from the 1950 census, <coughs> made, made it consistent up to 1980. So that is what we are doing when we are getting earnings for the early fathers. And, of course, later on you can use uh, later earnings. Okay, so we're doing a lot of testing on that. I'm not going to show that, but you know, this will be important, of course. So. Maybe less important for the rank, as we saw yesterday. Um, I mean, there is an, another data source that I'm, <laughs> that I'm digitalizing, is that Norway is, uh, you know, uh, it's open information and has been for uh, 150 years how much everybody uh, is earning. You know, I know uh, Magnus' uh, earnings, if I want to, and he know my uh, mine. So, and this information goes back to the uh, 1880s, uh, and it's all printed. You know, they are available in books. Uh, so, by county, 
So I've started to digitalize that. So <laughs> that means that, you know, uh, I know the name, the person of the name, his address, his children, his earnings, his uh, wealth, his taxes, his occupation. So, it, you know, this, that is a huge uh, source. Uh, so I've done it for two, uh, for two, um, I not, I, you know, I, I've not <laughs> done it, but, you know, I have uh, cooperated with the uh, with, um, National uh, Library, actually, to digitalize this for me. So, okay. So, uh, you know, so pff, the, the information here will be improving over time, but, but this is what we have for now. And it, you know, it's not too, too bad. Uh, <coughs> okay, so first I will do what everybody else has been doing. I have not really done this before because I've usually <laughs> looked at intergen intergenerational mobility in education, and, you know, not so much, much in earnings. Uh, but we, we will do basically what uh, other people are doing. But I think, you know, it makes sense <coughs> to use different measures since we have, you know, clearly uh, for border co correlation, whatever it is, I mean, it captures something of what we're interested in. It's one measure of what we're interested in. Uh, we have very good uh, income information now because it's from, uh, from the re registry data, data we have, tax information from 67 onwards. So. Um, and then we're uh, doing the father-son log-log and also the rank correlation, which are sort of two different ways of, uh, of measuring um, this intergenerational mo mobility. And of course, one of the points there is to see whether we are getting the same type of patterns. Of, of course, the levels will be different because we are measuring different things. But uh, uh, the interesting thing that we are interested in, uh, whether the pattern is the same. And, you know, we are going to do a lot of this stuff. Uh, some of uh, it we have done, uh, and some of it we are going to do. So this is, so what we're doing now, uh, we are taking uh, Björklund, Jenti, and Linkvist paper from two uh, 2009 in the JPB, and we are doing the brothers correlation, doing the same way of doing it, exactly the same way of doing it as they're doing, you know, sort of overlapping uh, cohorts, uh, adding three, uh, uh, three cohorts. Um, uh, for each, each time we are, uh, we are changing the groups, you could do this different ways, but you know, this is, exact, this is what we have done, exactly the, the way that Anders did. Um, um, and this is the pattern we are getting. So it's dropping from uh, uh, brothers born in the early 30s until uh, the 60s, up to the late 60s. We, we will extend this because it seems like there is something, you will see that later, something interesting is happening later on here. Uh, and we have also done it from, uh, from the mid-20s and you get the same pattern huh? because we can identify brothers, you know, back to 1920 actually. <coughs> okay, so um, this is the Swedish equivalent. Uh, fits pretty well, uh, except that, you know, something, it, it sort of it flattens out and increases a little bit around 1950 in Sweden. That's, that does not seem to be the case in Norway, at least with this measure. So that, uh, you know, we were quite happy <laughs> when we found that, and Anders, I'm sure, is happy. <laughs> uh, because, you know, the the... The development in these countries, although they, they were different also, uh, have very similar patterns. And then we are doing, uh, the other thing is to do the, the father-son income elasticities, uh, but then using, you know, this imputed uh, wage. Uh, uh, but, you know, you can do it differently. And if, you know, what is interesting is that we get the same type of pattern. Not exactly, um, but you know, more or less. Going from, um, you know, point almost five to point 15, which is sort of the standard uh, result uh, for Norway using these cohorts. So. I have a quick question. 
in the period that you're showing there, there is also a reduction in cross-sectional inequality. Is that correct? Yes. That so, may be correct. So I'm a little surprised that the, the correlation is going down all the way, but the elasticity is flattened. Flattens yeah, that field, no, I, given I, that the cross section inequality was also going down, yeah. which has a mechanical effect on the elasticity yeah. per se. Well, so I you would expect. I agree. No, so uh, this is a fair point. Huh? Um, so you would have to look into that. But it's. Yeah. But it would be nice to have the intergenerational correlation in the same thing. Yeah. That would address. Yeah, we, we have done that actually, and it, it looks very similar, but you know, so, but the problem, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, uh, the th let me show you the third one, which is the rank correlation, and that also had, has the same pattern. So, uh, so, you know, this is um, at least sort of the first result we have that, you know, you're using different methods, different measures, trying to capture parts of the same thing. Um, doing not so good data, but you, in other parts, uh, doing, using good data, um, different ways of dealing with the zeros, uh, etc., and you get very similar, a very similar pattern. But we should include that. I, I agree. The, the rank correlation is also based on this yeah. imputed municipality yeah. occupation, so it's kind of somewhat. Um, this one is irrelevant for my comment, other people want it. Mean, it is, it is, it is. This yeah. one. Yeah. Um, right. So, um, so at least, you know, so, uh, so far it looks. Um, Should we worry at all about the imputation kind of changing over time? Uh, so the like, differential. Uh, of error over time and I think we should worry about all of this. I, I think we should yeah so uh, it, it's not <laughs> it's not so clear yeah. so so what we will do uh, is that we will do a lot of uh, robustness checks here doing different ways okay. so uh, you know more like the Swedish uh, you but know I think, the the, I think the imputation gets noisier over or it gets less noisy over time which direction yeah, so, you know, so that, so that might, okay, so, <laughs> of course, I mean, uh, if you have a s classical measurement error, you c should get, it's getting maybe less noisy over time then, yeah. and then there should be less attenuation. But, yeah, but there, there's also, like, the IV, in term, you know, where you're including the effects of location and occupation, which yeah. could be changing. Yeah. But, to, uh, but, uh, but, you know, remember that the, the nice thing about the broader correlation, as far as we believe in the, in the earnings uh, registry, and I think we believe in that, we get the same pattern. And there is, you know, uh, it's not that noisy. Huh? Because th that is, you know, from the um, earnings reported to the tax authorities. So, uh, so that is what makes me quite, you know, Quite happy about what we're doing with the other things, but of course there are issues, and there will be a lot of robustness checks there. But uh, we haven't really gotten to that. Uh, so we see this big change, uh, and it is sort of expected since we have seen it for Sweden, you know, uh, for uh, from Anders' work. But we also find this uh, coming true uh, quite strongly uh, in our data. Okay, so what we're going to look at now is, you know. In, in a way, the mechanisms then. The <coughs> years of education, the connection between the family background and, uh, and education, is that changing over time? And also, f a more a skills measure or you know, an IQ measure, but because we know that there is a strong uh, correlation between the education and the skills, so we think about this as a skills measure. And interesting with this is, of course, that in a period when al almost nobody had, in the 30s, had higher education. Uh, the skills is a good measure, we think, um, to picking up what they know. And there is, you know, in Norway, we have the Flynn effect, as ever, you know, looks similar. Uh, and we will also look at the prices, whether the returns have been changing over time for education and skills. So, so it's not only, maybe. Uh, so here we do uh, exactly the same 
thing that you did in uh, your paper. So we're looking at the uh, association between son's year of education and father's income rank, uh, and that also drops uh, uh, over time. And the interpretation here is that the average years of education between families at the top and the bottom of the income rank distribution decreases from being almost three years in difference to 0.65 in difference. Is there a difference if you standardize that by kind of the, vari the, the within year variance of the? Because at some point the, the, the years of education is changing a, a, in means across the, or probably compressing to over yeah, time. That's a, that's a good one. Please show it. I haven't done that. That's for the IQ measure that I showed. You have done it there. Okay. Because they are normalized by year. Yeah. So at what age do we measure the sun settings? Uh, so we, uh, yeah. So so, uh, um, what did you say? The earnings? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so in the, the previous slides. So at what ages? I'm just thinking that it, it e education. No, no earnings or income. So uh, that, that's for the father's so. Okay. okay. My, my question is: so people take longer education over time. So now, so in the 30s, all the smart people took 10 years of education, and now all the smart people took 18 <coughs> years of education. Then. It will take longer. So, so at a given age, the wage gap will be smaller. No, no. Okay. So, uh, so um, you're measuring education uh, always when they're more than 30 years old, and that you know by that age in Norway it seems to stabilize. Okay, but I was talking about income. So, no, no, but so that's for the fathers. That, that's for the fathers. So, so you. Would yeah. Oh, so in, this is the rank uh, of the fathers' uh, education on uh, son's education. No, but in the, in the previous slides you were talking about. Yeah, but, you know, okay, so we are measuring uh, earnings uh, at the age uh, uh, when the sons are 19 or as close as 19 as we can. Okay. I don't know what this is. Yeah. But we are doing a lot of robustness checks on that. Um, because that is the issue. I mean, that is a major issue here. But as I said, you know, since we're doing, getting this, or, you know, the same pattern during, during the brothers' correlation, where we always have good information, then, uh, you know, yeah, we are fairly happy with that. Okay, so then we do the same thing, and there we are normalize this by, by cohort. Uh, and we find the same type of, uh, of pattern for, you know, this skill measure. Um, and then we are looking at uh, returns, uh, you know, sort of the income effect uh, of years of education, which is also, uh, you know, the, uh, the relative price of high and low education is changing over time here. And we see that return is, is increasing uh, over time. So, the, I mean, there's a lot of things going on here. Not only that, you know, it's less important who your parents were, but also the market price of education is changing. Uh, and we find the same thing, at least partly, for, uh, for this other skill measure that we are using. So, um, okay, so, so, you know, so I think so, so far what we have gotten, there is, seems to be quite a bit of action. Uh, you know, both that uh, parental background seems to be less important uh, for, for, uh, uh, for the son's income and rank in income, but also for education and also that the returns of skills and education is increasing over time. So there's a lot of, lot of things going on here. Um, and then, of course, so what we are doing <coughs> going to do now is uh, non-linearities. Um, so, of course, uh, what, uh, what is happening over time when it comes to is it uh, higher mobility for the middle class at the low part, or what is happening um, uh, at the highest part? Is there a change there? So, in the, the paper that... Uh, uh, Chedi et al. Pa uh, paper, uh, we saw that uh, the rank was uh, linear across uh, parental background. So the question is, is it linear here 
or, and is it changing by cohort? So that's what we are going to look at. Huh? Uh, so we, have, we look at both uh, transition matrices, you know, going from low to high, etc. Uh, and then we are doing, you know, the nonlinear version, sort of, of the rank uh, correlation with, with local appro approximations. So here is the, um, the transition ma matrix uh, in quintiles, fathers and sons. So, um, so if this, this were uh, completely um, equal, it should be 25, 25, 25, 20. now 20, 20, 20. Huh? So you see that uh, this is the <coughs> uh, probabilities for, uh, for sons moving up from the um, low to the highest, 0.11%. If you come from the low part, if you come from the highest part, it's uh, 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 three times and more higher. Uh, and you see something of that in the middle also. This has uh, changed at least a little bit when you look at the transition matrices. For the uh, cohorts born 60 to 64, so you can, uh, so you know, it's a higher probability for the low to come uh, get uh, higher up, and it's a lower probability for those with a high SES or income rank on the fathers to reach the highest level. So, you know, at least uh, that is a part of the action. So what we are doing next is to do this uh, non-linear rank-rank uh, uh, correlation. So these are the data points from the 1932-33 uh, birth cohort. Um, so here we, uh, you know, plot then son's average rank as a function of uh, his father's uh, income rank for the 1932-1933 cohort. So that's sort of being one end point then, the starting point for, for us. So. Um, and this is just a line through it. And then we add uh, the local linear plot. Uh, and you see there is, there is a difference in uh, um, in the steepness or the uh, local uh, mobility rate, so, so to speak, at the bottom and at the top. And if you add then <coughs> uh, the slope of this one, this is how it uh, looks like. So you see that uh, uh, there is higher persistence at the top than here. But, you know, but also something here. Huh? Uh, so we, something that looks like a convex shape um, from like in, in the early 30s cohorts. Um, so then we look at... Uh, Have you said what is included in income? Is it only earnings or does it include uh, capital income? No, not capital income. Not capital income. No. But you know, transfers, unemployment benefits, all of that is included. Okay you know, using exactly the same uh, measure as, you know, we have been using. And basically uh, the one you are using also. Um, so then we look at what happens. Hmm. Uh, so is this, isn't this mean earnings conditional on occupation or is this actual individual level earnings data? No, so this is, uh, um, uh, this is imputed. Imputed, okay. So you, uh, you have transfers for that? What's that? You said, I, th I thought you said you, you have transfers. <laughs> you have, you're asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me think now. So this is the 1948 uh, tax information. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's exactly the same uh, um, income measure as used later on. It's not mean, it's not mean imputation based on occupation. Oh, okay. Well, you, yeah. Uh, so this is taxable ear earnings. Uh, by occupation, by municipality. Wait. To each person, you have their individual earnings, or you have their mean earnings for that occupation and industry. Okay. For the mean fathers, <coughs> it's the mean by this uh, okay. uh, occupation. 
uh, municipality cell. And for the kids, it's. Uh, and for the kids, we could use the, you know, we have constructed. What is it? No, no, so what we are using for, uh, for earnings for kids is, um, uh, is the individual. Individual earnings, mm -hmm. okay. But so the what we have done in addition, we have yeah. used this type of measuring. Since, we, uh, since I said we have a consistent occupation um, classification. Yeah. Also done based on the censuses, etc. So and now we get you to convexity. Right. Yeah, so that's consistent. So we've done things where we impute income based on the college that you went to, for example, and there you get very sharp convexity. It's very similar to, to, to uh, what, you, what you find. It's, uh, so the, the linearity definitely does, does go, go away pretty quickly when you, when you switch to, to imputations, but what we haven't done is do an imputation for the parents and not the kids, so it could vary. Uh, I don't want to say that that's a uh, distinction, yeah, yeah. but the, the imputation could be something that's practical. Well, well I have you do you so you're grouping. Um, so for us, we're grouping kid earnings uh, and when we do the college imputations. And I guess the um, for us, like kids at the top of the income distribution are just much more likely to go to really good colleges, <laughs> and it just becomes more more convex. But then when they go out for earnings, it's uh, it's not as pronounced in terms of differences. I, I don't have an intuition. Yeah, but that. that's grouping for the sons then. Yeah. For this is for the parents, so it's flipped. So it's good yeah. you could always maybe it's yeah. for why it should be constant. So that's not. That's what we were yeah. So it, it may not be a difference, but right. Oh, good. How much does it take to shift a father from the seventy percentile to the ninety percentile? I mean, in the, in the U.S. data, it's really a lot of money to shift people around in the top. Oh yeah, that's a good. So we should look at uh, that also. Yeah. Just no, we haven't done that idea of what it means to shift people around here. Uh. Yeah, a little bit of the impression you will get from, from the, this, of course. Exactly. Right? Uh, but you know, that's a good point. I mean, you know, we could actually look at that. Sort of how that's been changing over time. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe Better the, s the steps have been uh, become larger or something. Or but also, if you don't care about rack racks, I think it would be nice to understand <laughs> I know that, Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you, you know a little bit of that information you get there, but you know it, it's a good point. So um, there's the same issue here. I mean, in the lower part of the distribution, it doesn't yeah. mean anything to shift around. Them. No. They have zeros and they have very low incomes. It's just epsilon change is going to shift people around. It's a good point. Um, so then the question is uh, whether this pattern is changing for the later. Uh, generation and uh, this is how it looks like and it does change yeah. so here you have the uh, rank rank and here you have the slope and the interesting thing here now is of course that uh, something has <laughs> happened at the bottom here um, uh, so this is comparing uh, the slopes uh, for the 1930 and the 1960. How predictive is occupation for earnings in these courts? I mean, it would be nice to know something about the partial R squared of occupation and earnings in, in the different courts. Right? Yes. I'm guessing in the later courts, it's much less predictive of, of earnings because you have a much more flexible labor market. So you actually have a lot of heterogeneity even within the, in the sector. Maybe. Yeah, okay. But, but you know, so it's. it's um, some way to get that no, no, we should say something about that. I mean, you know, we should provide information about that. I, I agree. Uh, the category stays the same. Okay, so. Is it also imputed for the second code? Yeah. For the 60 to 64? Yeah, well, so here we have done uh, different things. We have uh, imputed, but we also used the, the real ones. So, you know, we have. So this is a part of the, of the testing that we are, have been doing. And we get very similar, similar results. Yeah, I was going to say what I showed so yesterday has sort of a similar pattern for the 57 to 64. Yeah. <coughs> in Norway, you see a steeper yeah. slope at the bottom and yeah. the top, and a flatter. Yeah. With, and that's individual. Yeah. Okay, so we are going. So uh, the plan is also to do uh, to do this uh, type of test with real data for the, you know, this, these cohorts. But you know, this these data is not now available. Uh, 
so that could you mention the introduction of the word first step? Where, in which period would you put this event? When, when the, for now? Of course, it's a process. So, so if we. I just want to. Uh, yeah, so let me. Um, um, okay, so I mean, so the welfare state I is a lot of things. <laughs> you know. yeah, so everybody so. thinks that the welfare state was developed in the 60s and 70s. It, it was not. Uh, it was developed before that. Bec uh, and, uh, and it was not, uh, you know, remember that Norway before the Second World War, uh, you know, each, uh, each uh, region, so each municipality, you know, seven, eight hundred, had a, a lot of uh, discretion when it came to education, when it came to health. So the state was much, much weaker. I mean, this was, <laughs> was before the Labour government took over. Huh? So, but they also, of course, developed the welfare state in the sense that, you know, they developed, um, especially in the 30s uh, and 40s, uh, there was a lot of, of health reforms, so, you know. Uh, uh, Mother child uh, clinics, etc. And you know, we have, a, have another paper, not with these guys, but for other people, where we, where we look at the impact of that for, for uh, human capital investment. And that seems to be quite important. And there was a lot of, uh, I mean, tuberculosis was a big thing in Norway, uh, you know, because of the climate, I guess. And there was a big uh, uh, program on that in, in the f uh, late 40s. Um, and education reform, the first education reform, as I said, you know, the big education was, uh, was, for the, uh, was from, the, uh, from 35, uh, 35 until 1950. So this is the period where a lot of things were happening. It's hard to think about, I mean, going back to Gary's talk, if, if the process is not AR1, then all bets are off. I mean, you can have very, very slow processes. It can be something that happened in the Middle Ages, or sort of all of a sudden. No, no, see yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking about like a lot of the stuff. I'm not. Uh, I'm not no. really saying that uh, that the, the reforms ma made this, but I'm no, just but saying that this was the time. A lot of discussion about the Chetis paper and, and Etis paper, and this paper we have very sort of contemporaneous view of mobility uh, and reforms. But if it's really not AR1, then, then the argument is much more complicated. We have, we have very no, no, very smooth changes. I mean, the area effects coming from way earlier doesn't mean that we have them 30 years ago. That's how I mean the fact. Oh, because you share them also. Yeah, yeah. No, but but remember that I'm not saying I'm not saying these changes are due, due to the development of the welfare state or the reforms. Oh, I'm not saying that. I mean, you know, I'm saying that these are the patterns, and I'm saying that a lot of things were happening oh, I among other things. Uh, I mean, there was changing in in the in the returns to education apparently as we saw you know why was that because a lot of new industries where you know chemical industries etc was established needed that's engineers and so on. that should go the opposite direction i mean we get an increase in the return to education that's going to say that even if the correlation in education doesn't change then the income we should see more <coughs> i agree so it has to be so no, no, I, I dramatic agree. going on to offset that yeah so that's a sort of a yeah. one po potential explanation oh, it's not a critique i'm just sort no 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 i mean so yeah so I'm trying to be you know, very open about this. Is this you know. going to be read as a sort of big support for the welfare state? You know? If you show that picture, then all bets are off. Everyone is going to say that this is, this is great, the welfare state worked. OK, so I show, I'm not going to show it in Norway. I, I meant to. <laughs> <laughs> but I do agree with you. I mean, I, I, mean, I, agree with you, so. I, I, I meant to mention in my talk the work by uh, Nybaum and Stuhler, the theory paper arguing yes. that effects of policies on changes in mobility can be, you know, Sorry. take a generation yes. and they may not be monotonic. So that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I think, so, I think so. But, uh, but we have not started to, you know, connect these reforms to these patterns yet. Uh, I mean, we plan to do that, but, you know, and maybe that we don't find anything and maybe that, you know, uh, it, it's a longer term. How do you plan to assess the effects of those reforms on, on these, these measures? Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, well, you know, there are different ways of doing that. But, you know, so, so you can think that there are many reasons why you see these patterns. Uh, so, um, you know, it could be that uh, relative prices are, ch are changing, so, you know, it's more favorable to, uh, I mean, so it's sort of a demand. 
for a higher education that makes uh, uh, people take more education and you know the returns is increasing because you know the industry want this so that could be an explanation but you know it's so so the way we uh, do it so yeah, I mean there are papers that has been doing that um, so they in a way plug in uh, the timing of the reform as the sort of reduced form type directly into these models. So, um, so there are people that, that have been doing that. So that is what we plan to, plan to do. But when you have so many moving parts, as you put it, trying to disentangle... No, no, of course, I mean, so, so then we have to do, you know, we have to do the sort of diff and diff type of, or IV type of strategies you know, control for trends and all of that. I mean, so that would be the similar technology that people have been using. Um, so that is the plan. I mean, using the trends to try to take into account some of the demand changes, etc. So that is, you know, the, exactly the standard way of doing it. That's what we... These are all men. Yeah, yeah. And the reason is that we rely on this uh, yeah, so military data. It's female, it's even, it's even more than that. Yeah, we, we, that we don't know. Maybe. Remember that Norway in the up to 1960 was uh, almost no education society. Yeah. So, um, not by cohort, but you know, the year of 1960. <coughs> Yeah. So. Yeah. So this is. Uh, um, so yeah. So you get uh, this part in addition. So. Uh, and and what we will do is, of course, to try to roll this window, at least uh, one more decade, maybe uh, maybe two. Because there's a lot of worry in Norway also that you know at the lower end, something is happening. Huh? that there seems to be a stop in mobility at the lower end. And that is partly what you see. So you said on the also of the U shape. Can you do this? So why would you ever expect to see a U shape? Is there any, I'm just curious. Uh, it seems hard what you No, I mean, so the, the, you know, in a way, what you're saying here is that the middle class, which is sort of floating up, that's what you're saying. Huh? That, that, and uh, there is uh, more persistence or le lesser mobility at the bottom and at the top. You see that in the in our data, you can reject. You, you find a U-shaped pattern. Actually, you know, it looks linear in ours, but you can reject that the slopes are the same with the data, right? Just we don't have this degree of, of a U-shape. Yeah. Uh, you see that you get a tailing off at the bottom, and you've got a slight increase up at the top, but it's not. Uh, it's certainly not this big. <laughs> and this is totally consistent with the the both rep the uh, Klaus Kleiner and uh, yeah. uh, 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 Wojcik's work in, in Denmark, right? Yeah. It's the Steepness at the bottom and the yes. steepness at the top and an incredible minus. Well, they do it come. One question mm -hmm. regarding what's going it's on the, at, the, the at the bottom. Uh, could it somehow be related with the way you deal with ties for ranks at the bottom? Because I assume you, you're following the, their methodology and assigning you have a, a bunch of zeros, right? They all get the mean, the, mean, the zero basically, mm -hmm. assign or so. Yeah, the main rank is zero. Right. Could, could be related to that somehow, that you have a lot of people with this, just with the same rank at the bottom, and so that affects, you know, what you estimate with a non-parametric? Yeah. C can you show the previous image when you have, instead of the slope, the predictions? This one? I'm not sure. Maybe. Um, how could I look at that? I mean, sort of, uh, one way to interpret that I agree with this sort of saying that you don't get rid of the problem with the zero. So how do you pair it off? This doesn't mean anything anymore. Sorry? One way to say is that you don't, you do, you don't really get rid of the problem with the zeros. But this between the percentile so mean anything. Uh, no, 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 I was. No, you sign the mean rank, right? So you. Oh, you, but you have all zeros. So basically, go from. From the from the first percent up to the third no, percent. It, it still means exactly like what position on average are you going to fall in the distribution. Right? Yeah, maybe it doesn't mean anything. Just I mean, if you don't like ranks, you don't like ranks. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I have never a CDF social welfare function. No, but uh, the, the, the distribution, the inverse distribution is great. This is all the something I'm serving. No, I, it's just a summary of the Okay, so this is just to say that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, you, you know, the only thing I wanted to say that, you know, it, it does mean that coming from the bottom, uh, you have a higher probability of ending up higher. You know, I mean, so these, these are sort of the marginal <laughs> effects. So these are the more levels effects. So, you know, you have a higher probability of ending up uh, higher, you know, for this cohort than for this cohort, just to, you know, make sure that uh, and, uh, and the opposite here, I mean. Coming back to some of the Gatsby stuff that, people, that we've talked about a little bit over the last day, is it true that the income distribution has become kind of more concentrated in the middle class in the 19, uh, for the 1960 cohort relative to the 1930 cohort? So one story for the flatness is that um, um, just the, the, the difference between being at the, the, the 30th and the 60th percentile isn't the same as what it used to be? So I, th I think the thing is that, you know, we don't really have good information about uh, earnings yes. in 1930 and 1950 and, you know, so, I mean, there is some work indicating, yeah. of course, that, you know, you have a narrowing. Uh, and Magna has done some work, uh, you know, using later data yeah. from 67, but, you know, we don't really know very much. Uh, yeah, so if we get very similar results, so we have, do, we have done it both. We, we have done both, okay. and we get very similar results. Because that's the zeros. I think if it looks the same with imputed income, then the zeros are sort of imputed the weight. So then it can't be the zeros driving the bottom. No, you still have zeros in the kids' income. You're just yeah, yeah, yeah. Parents, so you yeah, still yeah, could but, but they also have zeros so in the registry data, the zeros that we saw. Oh. I mean, less of it, less of it. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing for um, years of education. So there is a, you know, there is mobility in education if you want. Even if the, uh, this is big. <laughs> I mean, so remember that uh, this is the period where the Norwegian society goes from almost zero education to being the top of the OECD. You know? I mean, these are the cohorts, um, uh, you know. Uh, but, uh, this is where everything happened when it comes to education. Because it's very different from the US in that sense. Because you had, you know, education level was high even, you know, in 1920, uh, relative to. Uh, and, uh, you know, <coughs> the IQ rank. Um, one question about the, the last graph. Do you have in your registry data for the, the selectivity of the college or university where people go? Like, can you distinguish between the prestige of colleges or something? Because yeah, you can. Uh, uh, what happens, what we think you happens can. here is that there is a, a lot of equalization in terms of just going to a college, right? But much less in terms of... Yeah, but, okay, so the two things then. So, so the U.S. is very different from most other countries when it comes to the education system. You have the very elite, and then you have sort of regional uh, colleges, which is, you know, or what you call it, community colleges. You, you really don't have that in Norway. Of course, you have elite to a certain degree, you know, business schools and engineering places, uh, you know. So we have a little bit of that, but you don't have Harvard, huh, you know. <laughs> and you don't have community colleges. You have regional colleges, but, you know, they are not community colleges, so you don't have that. If you did just the probability of attending college as a function of Yeah, yeah, no, I think that, yeah, I agree. And also, you know, uh, finishing high school, we, we should do, you know do that at, at different, different parts. So like in the U.S., it's like 20% of the bottom of the income distribution. Yeah. Is yeah. it very, is it much higher in Norway? Is it, so try, and the years of education to me is incredibly, com like that's. Yeah, that's no, 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 so, 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 uh, so I completely agree that we should split it up in the different parts of the education distribution, yeah. because also, the dropout rate in Norway is very high, you know, not finishing high yeah. school. Huh? But I think if we get to, to Pablo's point, because 
it's not true that like everybody goes to <laughs> goes to college at least in the in the, in the U.S. Right? It's a no, no, no. I mean, it's uh, Norway, yeah. Norway now, and U.S. is very similar. Okay. In the percentages going to to college, but you don't you don't have the wide distribution that you have here. But you know, it's, we could look at some of that because we know exactly which school they went to. Uh, you know, uh, the university or college they went to. So we could rank those. So. Yeah. You know, we find, uh, form very similar patterns. Uh, and what it seems to be is that uh, mobility in the middle, uh, for the middle class, ha has increased most. Um, we're only saying that it coincides. Uh, with all the reforms, I'm not, you know, we're not claiming, claiming anything more, uh, because a lot of other things was happening. So when you do an analysis of, uh, you know, trying to see whether the reform affected uh, these changes, you have to do the standard, standard stuff, uh, you know, take out trends, etc. And we are not um, claiming anything about, you know, uh, policies versus other factors. Uh, and you know, the first thing we are going to do now is to look at this uh, education reform because what we have looked at also is um, what we see in our data from the 30s is that uh, uh, there's a lot of convergence across regions. Uh, and it seems like uh, quite a bit of that is coming from this reform equalizing uh, the school year acro across regions. So that is probably where you're going to find the, find the action. So. Um, because there was a huge difference, and it, you know, within 10 years, there was no difference. Okay, so that's it. <laughs>